Okay, we are now recording. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Broadview Public Library's book banter. This month we are going to be discussing the graphic novel Bitterroot Volume 1 and Volume 2 by David Walker, Chuck Brown. Yeah. All right. We have Miss Yvonne here and our special guest, we have Mr. Michael Hildebrand. Hi, Michael. Thank you for joining us. How you doing? Thanks for glad to be here. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'll give a brief uh, synopsis of Bitterroot, unless Michael, you want to do it. What did you what did you think of the book of the graphic novels? Have you ever heard of these? Have you ever read these before? What did what did you kind of think first of all before we do like a brief summary? I'm just curious. I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to know already what you think. Um, no, I, I've never actually read the, the these particular graphic novels, but I have heard of the company that made them. Image. Mm -hmm. uh, they well when I was younger, they made a kind of spawn. I read religiously as a kid, so uh, and like I said, they always produce good work anyway. So I pretty much gave it a try, and they do, yeah, yeah, I don't like it. All right, yeah, think about it, it. Does have that kind of spawn type of? Yeah, right. Yeah. I like these because, first of all, I love graphic novels, but I like this one in particular because I love history and graphic novels, and these combined like black history like it it takes place in the 1920s and and it takes place in Harlem of all places and 1920s Harlem Renaissance so I thought that the setting of the book was um was telling also because of where it took place and exactly what's going on in the book and what took place um in the 1920s um it brings in like different historical events like Tulsa, which is uh, which pretty much everybody's doing now in Lovecraft Country, Watchmen, everybody's talking about Tulsa. So I thought that was completely interesting that they did that in this graphic novel. I agree. Also, so this graphic novel, um, volume one is called Family Business and volume two is called Rage and Redemption. So volume one of Bitterroot is about a family, a monster hunting family. Um, I think their name is the Sangriers. Am I pronouncing that right? Does that sound right? Sounds um, about right. Sangri yes. family. I said and, Sangri, but okay. Okay. Sangri. Yeah. Sangri. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know how to pronounce Sangri family. Right. And they have been monster hunters for generations, it seems like. So their family is a family of monster hunters and the matriarch of the family works in root magic um, to kind of, I don't wanna say cure, is that the right word? Is she, she's not curing them, but she's turning the Jinnu, I guess, back into humans. They're not killing these monsters, but they're turning, because they're not really monsters, right? Like, right. they're people. Uh, they kind of took uh, racism and kind of turned it around to make you see if, uh, I guess, what it truly is. It's kind of monstrous and it's evil and it's, you know, really okay. bad. So more, um, they were the more root is kind of like, well, to turn them back, I guess, into humans so they can stop feeling and thinking the way they were, <laughs> sort of. Kind of weird, but yeah. What were you gonna say, Michael? Well, um, uh, I just took more. They were more, uh, more hate influenced. Um, they hate to pretty much take over them to a point where they turn into the monster that they, they, they were. Yeah, I agree. I think I think like uh, is, is is a metaphor. Is that the right word? Like, yeah, they're so filled with <laughs> hatred that on the inside that they turn into these hate-filled monsters on the outside. Like you can see the hate on the right. outside that they feel on the inside. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like a that's a good description, yeah. Like a physical yeah. representation of the monsters that's inside, yeah. Exactly, yeah, that's a, that's an even better one. So yeah, I agree. So I, I think that this is like, I think this is interesting because you know, like you said, you can't, what is hate? Like how is hate is shown in so many different ways by, you know, killing people, lynching people, you know, these representations of hate that black people or African-Americans have experienced over the years have been, you know, seen in so many brutal and cruel ways, but to actually turn 
the person that is doing the hating into the monster is really, I thought that was a really interesting thing to finally see, especially in graphic novel form. I think it's a great way to help people understand it more. Mm -hmm. The destructiveness it has and the what, what it really truly looks like. Not just somebody saying something wrong or doing something wrong, but truly seeing that person, you know what I mean? Like yeah. turning them inside out, sort of. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, like a, like a, it's, it's like an eye opener as if they placed a mirror in front of your face and like, this is exactly what you are doing right now. You're not Right. Yeah. And I think it sheds more light on the actual perpetrator of the hate versus the victims of the hate. Because like you say, you see Black people being lynched, you see them being killed, and then, you know, the perpetrators of the hate, especially especially in our community, like, you know, historically Black people, they aren't held accountable. Like, you know, they get away with it. They're not held accountable because of whatever reason. It's just, but now you can see that the perpetrators of the hate are the ones that are being affected by it because they're turning into these monsters because of their hatred. So, I thought True. that was cool. Yeah. It was. So, and I don't even read graphic novels, so, but this was kind of interesting. Yeah, I know. It was different from you, so I'm glad you gave it a chance. Um, I know it might have been a little chaotic, like, you know, with the images and the words, but um, what did you think about the artwork? Very graphic. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it, too. I loved <laughs> Ford's character, and I love the, what's his name, Johnny, Johnny Ray, the, the little white boy character. I liked his character because um, he didn't turn into a monster. Like all the other clan members that were there, they turned into monsters, but he didn't turn into a monster. He's the only one that stayed human. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And that again was um, interesting because like you say he, okay, there's this white guy in, in a clan robe um, and he's the only one that stayed human. So there was something about him. In his true heart, he was not like yeah, yeah, yeah. He even worked and worked, started working with them. Yeah, to help them. The product of his environment, pretty much. I'm glad they did that. I'm glad they. I'm glad they said, oh, okay, we're not going to make every white person turn into a monster. Um, we're going to show, you know, that not that everybody isn't filled with hate, and even the black people. Like, who are the um the in the first in the first one, the two black people that were the bad guys. There was a lady, Miss Nightingale, and then there was another guy. Was it Dr. Sullivan, I think his name was? Yeah, they was kind of like devilish. They was like trying to make them do things, which was crazy. So yeah, what was I going on with that. that? Yeah, I was like, what was you going know, on with that? I didn't really understand. Like, where did they come from and why was they like turning on their own people, sort of? You know? They were monsters, but they weren't the genuine monsters. They could no, but be, they wasn't yeah. helpful either. They was, I don't, I'm trying to figure. I don't know what they was really trying to do, but it was trying like they was trying to turn them evil, like they were. Were they evil? Like they were trying? Were they trying to get something from them, or what they was just? I, I didn't really get that in the first book. Like exactly what were they trying to do, Michael? What's your take on it? What do you think? Um, from what I read, um, it seems as if they were trying to get them to actually embrace what they really were. Hmm. You mean the people that turned into the genu, or you mean other African Americans or other people that weren't turned? Well, the, the, uh, the Dr. Sullivan. Um, okay. It's like it's like everybody had think. Well, it seemed like every, he, they had their own ulterior motives as to what the pro as, as to how to handle the problem as opposed to trying to cure the people, it seems as if they were just trying to get them to just accept who they really were. Because Berg got infected, but um, by either uh, it was Dr. Sullivan or Miss Nightingale, like he got infected and he started to turn into them, right? Not the Genu, because there's a cure for the Genu, but Berg got infected by whatever they were. And he started right. turning into something that mama, that the, that the mat, that the root magic couldn't take away like oh it couldn't God. necessarily cure him so I wasn't sure exactly what they were and what like were they infected but what were they infected with were they infected with hate or what was turning them into whatever they were and I don't know I don't recall the book really explaining it I couldn't pick it up yeah so it really didn't say why they, they were they were the way they were they just 
Or, they know. just showed up, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they showed up, how, you know, but it didn't say how they became like that. <laughs> they just showed up, okay. So yeah, so in this book, it they introduces um another family member who I guess was I don't want to say exiled, but he was. He wasn't with the family. I think Uncle Enoch, um, he was kind of doing his own thing because of something yeah. apparently that happened before. Um, mm -hmm. And he wasn't necessarily fighting monsters alongside the family, but they went to him for help once Berg was infected yeah. to see if he could figure out what was going on. Is that right? Or Yeah, that was true. They needed his help for something. And, um, something that he knew that they didn't know, seemed like. But then at the end, didn't it, didn't it, didn't that some kind of portal, something opened up and Cullen fell into or got pushed into or something happened to Cullen because of something. It was that kind of some did. portal into some world that was not, yes. I don't know. I'm going to say some not desolate, reality, see, but wasteland. Right. Almost like when your soul go to die or something. It was just, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was more like a purgatory, but I don't know. So wait, who opened up the portal? It was a portal, right? Somebody opened up. A, was that Enoch or was that one of the mo was that Doctor Sullivan? That was Somebody? one of the monsters, wasn't it? Okay. That that lady, what was her name? Nightingale. Yeah. yeah. That opened up a portal because I know Ford came and was helping, and Enoch came and was helping. Okay. Okay. So I guess I don't know. Did I did I did I miss anything about the first? I know we summed it up kind of quickly um did you guys have any other points about the first volume or anything you found interesting or that stood out to you or that you wanted to talk about with the first volume that i might not have said well i'll I just add on to the fact um you said that you enjoyed the actual time period that the comic that the graph novel took place in i did because mm -hmm. if you there are a lot of i mean of, of any kind of media whatsoever they really explore that rate that rowan's 20 period where um, I don't know, I, I, I like the art style, I like the time period because it gives you something new, gives you a different perspective. Yeah, I agree. And I liked, um, I mean, I did, I like, I mean, I like history and I like that, like you said, it gives a different perspective of a time that was passed, but it gives a different take on, um, I think the lives of African-Americans too, because like you said, when you read history, you kind of read about, oh, black people were here, we existed, but, we're never mm -hmm. featured in these alternative lifestyle roles, if that makes sense. Like we're never shown as the superheroes. We're never shown as the heroes or we're never shown as, um, you know, like monster hunters. Like there was none of this alternative fiction or alternative things going on during that period that we've seen in media, like you said, Michael. Um, so I thought, it, and even like you're saying, the drawing and the 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 clothing that they have, it, it's, it felt so authentic to me. I mean, that's just me. Like when they were, and the artwork is pretty good. I do like the artwork, so. Yeah, the artwork was exceptional. And I like that. I like that it showed that black people were intelligent. Like, you know, you have this, these stereotypical images, um, like Michael was saying in the media, but this showed a whole bunch of different things like black people were scientists black people were martial artists black people yeah. you know what i mean it just it just showed us in different roles and i really like that all right all right all right so let's do volume two rage and redemption this one was a lot for me and um i felt I don't know like I felt I felt the first story was very streamlined like it was easy to follow I kind of got for the most part what was going on and I don't know if it was intentional not to disclose exactly who Dr. Sullivan and Mrs. Nightingale were in the first novel I don't know if that was a plot point if that was intentional I but think so Keith so you can read the second one I felt <laughs> I felt like a lot more was going on in the second novel and it was I was easily I don't know if I was confused is the right word, or maybe I needed to read it again to kind of follow, but I, I didn't follow the story as clearly as I did the first on the one. first one. I don't know how the It was a lot going it. on in the second one. Yeah. That's what. There was a lot. Yeah. Was so I didn't, I kind of got confused, like, um, 
on the locations, like where they were. I don't know if they were going back and forth. Like they were, it, it felt like there were more storylines going on and I was getting the mixed up and I couldn't keep them straight. So I don't know if that was just me, if it's, I'm just. Like, no, that wasn't you. It was yeah, had a story with it. Yeah, the story, yeah. it was everywhere. Um, the it was everywhere. It was back everywhere. and forth between purgatory and now and, you know, they was going back and forth between, you know, his parents and how, what happened and that. It was just, it was just back and forth. So it was kind of a little confusing. You'd really have to probably read it a second time <laughs> to really get the true story. A, a, lot, a lot of time jumps. I mean, they, they did a lot of flashbacks. Yeah, that's what I said. So it was time. back between, you know, when his mom and dad was like, what happened to them? Right. And then what happened to him? And you know, it was going to step kind of back and forth. So you kind of did get a little confused here and there, like, well, who are they talking about? <laughs> and I was confused about where they were in parts of it. Like Blink was with this Asian girl, but then they was in someplace else in the church. I was confused about where they were and how, like when they were, I guess. Like, were these supposed to be happening simultaneously? I was confused about that and like and, and, and like where they were moving to i guess i was confused about that because they were yeah it was that did get a little muddied up there I, like i said i think you'd have to read it a second time yeah that's what i was saying i have to read it. just keep thoroughly reading. and carefully yeah because I, I remember the part yeah the part when she she teamed up with the asian girl and i was wondering okay is this more like a like a future site where she's a little more experienced now when she's like on her own on monitors it's more of a like, like that's what I was confused about. Like, what what time period was right. the same thing place in? Yeah, yeah I was confused. And then, I mean, I get that they were... So in this one, Michael, you had mentioned that um, from the first one, this portal that they opened, it was in like a purgatory or an alternate <laughs> world. Um, and we do find out that it was, I guess, I could, it was somewhere between, is that right? It was somewhere between worlds or something. It was called... Um, I can't even pronounce it. Berkza. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Barkza. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I couldn't um, pronounce it either. <laughs> but we find out that um, Blink's mom, who we thought was dead, and um, right. is it Cullen's dad? Cullen's dad. Is that is that who that is in there? His dad. Right. It was um, actually not really dead. Right. They're in this death. place. They ended up right. in this place and, and, and a host of other people ended up in this place and they formed kind of our own society, our own community intent on keeping these evil, how these evil beings. Um, we find out that different uh, groups of people like um, the people in Chinatown and that these, are, the Sangrias aren't the only monster hunting family. Right. Um, and <laughs> we find out there are other uh, people of color, ethnicities. Um, I think was these three girls, were they Irish or Scottish or something? I don't remember. I don't remember that. But we see that there are, um, uh, we see there's an Asian family that's also for generations been hunting monsters and they call them something different. So each family or each ethnic group um, calls them something different, but essentially they're the same thing. Um, and they and they each use different root magic to kind of um, defeat them or battle them or control them or subdue them, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. um, so we find out, you know, Cullen comes back all buffed up and crazy. I think he's crazy because <laughs> he he was all timid in the first, and now he come back blazing and he he crazy in this one. And Blink's mom comes back and his dad um, kind of comes back, and they're trying to keep this evil being and Cullen is like obsessed with um what is the per Adro Idro however you pronounce it um that was in this place and their intent on not letting uh this being come into their world but it does through Miss Nightingale I think somehow it possesses her and mm -hmm. it starts to wreak havoc on on earth on this population and you know in these cities and that is um, how, that's what's going on in volume two. Is that, is that pretty much a good synopsis of it? Anybody have anything to add? No, that's pretty good synopsis, yep. So, but again, I was totally confused about when some of this was going on. I know at the beginning, like it talk, it goes like it says, Maryland, 1850. And then like Mike, Michael, you were saying, it keeps jumping and going from place yeah. to place. Yeah. Um, 
and it goes back, it talks about Berg's dad when he was small and how he got to be who he is. And then it gives a synopsis on Ford and, you know, what happened to him. And, and I don't know, like, I, I kind of get what they were trying to do, but I think that it was too much for this one book if that makes sense. Like I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to talk and go and explain, give a little bit more in depth on who these characters were, their storyline, how they became who they were. But I don't know, maybe I would have appreciated that in a separate volume, maybe. I I think they should have stuck to some kind of timeline where you can actually follow it and then made a third book, maybe. But put it all in that second book was a little confusing for me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just spread just spread it out and then include those flashbacks when they become appropriate to include. Right. It seemed like they was kind of random. Right. It was random. You know, like oh, you start yeah. reading and all of a sudden you're somewhere else talking about somebody else. And then it jumps back to where you were before. It's like, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> then I have to go back and read like what? <laughs> I was looking for them to connect in some sort of way because they did that. It felt like, like you said, flashbacks, like when they told what happened, which was so weird. I still don't get Dr. Sullivan and Miss Nightingale's story. I still don't get how they connected or I don't get it. I, yeah, I, was confused too. I, I see what they're doing. I like, you know, the whole Tulsa They, you know, they, they they lost their family in the Tulsa massacre. But I don't get how they were connected. It seems like they were just two random people that happened to meet. Or am I getting that wrong? No, that seems like how it was. It seemed like it was, yeah. And then they were just random people that obviously lost their families. And they met and then they just, what, turned it to these monsters? Decided to ha- hate, decided. <laughs> yeah, right. But, yeah. but theirs isn't hate, though. <laughs> theirs is something else. And that's what that's what turned them into monsters. I'm, I, I'm, I'm still confused about the whole, I'm still confused about that. I still don't quite understand the, the connection between those two. No, they need a third book to explain all that. Yep. So maybe, like I said, I think it, I think <laughs> I need to go back and read it, but I don't know if I want to go back and read it. I know because it's, <laughs> I don't think you'd be less confused. You'll still be confused. Just read it twice. So. Yeah. So I don't know. And I um, I felt that because so much was going on in this one, the artwork was a little bit more chaotic to me um, with the symbols and and the and the people that turned into not Jenu this time, but they were just there. They were just like zombies. I'm going to use the word zombies. So if- that's what they look like in the book. Yeah, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I felt the artwork was a little bit more chaotic and kind of like harder to follow in this one there was too many like scenes in the panel if that makes sense like I don't know I did I did appreciate and I found amusing the um the transitions like when they did bitterroot like they would do them like the prince like the purple rain uh little spot where they did it in like the purple rain like they doing like old movie and music uh things like in between they did like uh, Harlem Nights and Do the Right Thing. Yeah, so I found I found those <laughs> I found those amusing. Whoever the artist was that took the time to do those covers, um, like that. So that was amusing. Yeah, <laughs> Do the Right Thing. But I don't know. Like I don't know. This one was this one was a bit much for me this one was a little bit more confusing a little more chaotic a little more all over the place and um, I think they just tried to put too much in that second volume that's all yeah Yeah. it just was too much and I don't know it just was too much too many stories to tell in one book yeah and like I said it'd be different if they I felt like they were connected in some way but I felt like um like they, they didn't connect the dots good, really. They yeah. introduced all these characters, um, which we kind of got to know. Like, we knew Ford, we knew Johnny Ray, we knew Cullen, we knew those characters. But, like, I don't get, like, the lynching. Is that the, the boy was lynched? And the, I don't, where were they? I don't know where Hopefully they were. Georgia. I don't know. How did they get there? I might have missed that part. How did they get there? 
See, I don't remember that. And were <laughs> they all, and was all of this going on simultaneous? Like, like, cause it jumped from blank, like Michael was saying to the Asian girl. Yep. Right. And then it went back to wherever they were. So was that simultaneous? Like was something happening in Georgia and something happening in Harlem? Was this all going on simultaneously? And just yeah, they, different? They never explained it, yeah. They, yeah, they did explain it. When did these things happen? They just described them. They're saying where they are, but so I'm guessing. But you didn't know if they happened at the same time. Did this happen like years before, in between, yeah. like when? Was it more, like I said, was it more of her now on her own doing this because she's more experienced or was it more at the same time? Yeah. Because they do, like, they tell you where, but it doesn't say dates necessarily. So, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I guess people like people listen to this be like, duh, it's obvious they're there. So if anybody is listening to this when we post it and mm -hmm. you have any comments, please oh, comment uh, Please comment below if you think that uh, <laughs> we're missing the entire <laughs> point of this. But, um, but yeah, but and again, Yvonne, we should make a disclaimer that this is just our opinion um, oh, yeah. about the graphic novels, um, about the books. This is just, we enjoy reading them, but this is again, just our opinions. Um, about what we kind of thought um, about them and and whatnot. That's all, right? We invite you to read them and get your own opinions. It could be exactly. different from ours. Mm -hmm. So does anybody, Michael, do you have anything else you want to talk about or add or um, anything you think might be important um, that you want to talk about with Bitterroot? Um, pretty much just um, say, give the book a chance. Like I said, the book is it's a great read. It gives you a different different perspective than what we were used to reading. Mm -hmm. Pretty much opens your eyes up to a lot of things. You know, pretty much makes you really think. Yeah, it you is. See hate, you see hate from a person. Seeing it actually manifest itself into actual, you know, an actual monstrosity. Yeah. It might ring more true with you. Right. It, it rings more true. Like, wow, wait, like, like, is that what I really am? Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And just to mention that on volume two, I don't even know how to go back on this thing, but um, this won the Will Eisner Award for Best Continuing Series in 2020. So another reason to read the book, it won a Will Eisner Award. And um, so it is, a, it is a good series and it's definitely informative. I actually read the essays in the back of the books as well. Um, and I would highly recommend Bitterroot. Um, Again, just for the historical perspective. And again, like Michael said, it gives you a completely different perspective on hate and social commentary on, um, you know, 1920s um, life in Harlem and African American and the whole dynamic between, um, you know, just what was going on um, in the 1920s um, with African Americans and the whole out way was that when was Jim Crow was that Jim Crow law still or had that ended already this is I don't I don't know my history is this uh when did Jim Crow start Michael yeah uh, Michael <laughs> right. Michael, I think, um, I know no, no, I'm think. um because I know I know like I know after slavery supposedly ended after the slaves were emancipated um there were there was reconstruction but was Reconstruction like right away? And then, in my opinion, there was no such thing as Reconstruction. Like it was, it was a concept, but it wasn't enacted. So I'm guessing, so if there was Reconstruction, how did Jim Crow even come about if supposedly we were reconstructing? That doesn't make sense to me. And I don't even know when Jim Crow was, but it seems like it was going on during the 1920s. It was because slavery ended in what 1850. When was the Civil War? 1854. 1864. 1864 to yeah. 1861 to 1864, right? Right. And then a year later, 1865 was the Emancipation or something. The Eman no, I think. The, oh, I'm sorry. Hold up. The Emancipation took place before that. I'm okay. Sorry, the war ended in 65. Okay, so was Reconstruction like supposedly going on after the Emancipation? Yes, the after the war. And then when and then Jim Crow was enacted 
after reconstruction, which doesn't seem right to me, because if you're reconstructing things, how are you describing? I'm, con yeah, Michael, you well, know him. Well, Jim Crow started in eighteen in eighteen seventy, so okay. Right. So that's what I'm saying. But the period right after the Civil War was supposed to be reconstruction, right? Right. So and that's probably why they came up with Jim Crow because that's didn't what I'm like saying. Like, <laughs> how are you reconstructing things? I I guess I don't get reconstruction and. Well, I guess somebody attempted to reconstruct and then somebody like, uh-uh, no. We got to put a halt on this right now. It was an attempt that just didn't go through pretty much. And then they thought up Jim Crow, hey, yeah. I know how to squash it right now. Yeah. This is what we're going to do. Because I'm like, <laughs> reconstructing things, how are you becoming yeah. more discriminatory against people by enacting Jim Crow? I never I never understood that. I didn't get Because the they didn't want it to be, you know, they didn't want it. That's what the whole thing was. They figured out a way to stop it. Like I can see where this is going, but we're gonna stop it in its tracks right now. It caused them, it caused them more problems than it, it, it solved, and they decided, you know what, let's come for a more simple solution. All right. Jim Just Crow ban everything. The, Jim Crow was the simple solution. <laughs> for them, yeah, because it didn't affect them. <laughs> it didn't affect their lives at all. So yeah, it was simple. Right. We can keep them from doing this, 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 and this. So yeah. Problem yeah. solved. Right. Way to, the, way to the right. We're here. We're good. Right. Right. <laughs> like you're free, but you're not really free. Okay. Well, we we okay. we still know that. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that whole America, the land of hypocrisy. Oh, we're gonna reconstruct we're gonna free you slaves against our against our better judgment. What? We're free you. <laughs> we're gonna attempt to reconstruct the South and kind of, oh, but no, we don't want you to have any rights, so we're going to Yeah, do that's it. like, but this is what much, you yeah. can't do, okay? I'm it's pretty much everything. You can't so do they, it. Okay. Yeah, they, reconstruction <laughs> benefited no one. It really didn't exist. No. Okay, we're clear yeah. on that. Okay. <laughs> Non-existent, I guess what you could say. So I feel like kind of in a way, like Mike was saying, Reconstruction started in the 18th I mean, uh, Jim Crow started in the 1870s and continued mm -hmm. for, I don't even how, Michael, I don't know how long, supposedly, I don't even know if Jim Crow ended. Has Jim Crow even ended? Like Technically, it, no. It feels like. <laughs> well, officially, it's, it was supposed to end in 1965, but. Oh, when the Civil Rights Movement, supposedly, right. that was the end yeah. of Jim Crow. Supposedly, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yet, Okay, but yet during the during the 1960s, they were still lynching people, assassinating people, and okay, I got you. So, so it's so called, you know, it's against the law, but we can't so, like, what? Yeah, I feel like... <laughs> like, you know, that's how it was. It's against the law, but but. Yeah. Right. I feel like the I feel like this graphic novel is an attempt at reconstruction in a different way from a different point of view because that's essentially what they're doing. They're reconstructing parts of Harlem, parts of the South, where they were at, um, with these people turning into monsters, the Ku Klux Klan and it's like, okay, y'all still doing hateful things and now it's showing on like your true colors are literally they're showing. Right. Like you're wearing your you're Wouldn't that be great today street. if you can actually see? That'd be lovely. Because people lovely. kind of, you know, keep it covered up. You don't know until it come out. Yeah, that would be kind of scary. It's like you talking to someone and they face and just turn into face. a monster. You're like, what was that? And they'd be like, oh, that was nothing. I'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, that would be that would be awesome and creepy at the same time. But like you said, at least you would know who you're dealing with. Like, right, you're not a right. fake person that's you know, oh yeah, right. yeah, that's some oh, for civil rights, and then they go home and talk, you know, the other stuff. Right, they Maybe. go home and got the Confederate yeah. flag hanging in their room right. or something, <laughs> or a Nazi flag, you know, yeah, hanging. Nazi flag, yeah. Right, <laughs> so you know. You thinking you oh Miss So and So baking cookies for the school PTA and she at home you know hail Hitler so yeah <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that but you get what I'm saying I'm just you but know. yeah that is that is the truth though I mean you don't know sometimes people you know put on different faces for different reasons you're right you're absolutely right right um so anybody else have anything they want to add for me in this no like I said it's a good book you should definitely read it. Yes, it and is a great form book. Form your own opinion mm -hmm. about it. 
if you, if anyone is interested in checking out Bitterroot, we do have it available here at the Broadview Public Library for checkout. We have both volume one and volume two of Bitterroot. And as the series continues, again, it was the winner of the Will Eisner Award for best continuing series. So as the series continue, we will definitely continue to purchase Bitterroot because it, again, it is a great graphic novel. Um, it's a social commentary and um, I highly recommend it for anyone who's interested. Um, and there's also another book. I don't know, Michael, did you do Lovecraft Country? Did you see Lovecraft Country? No. No, okay. There's another book out um, recently published called Ring Shout and um, it's by P. Jelly Clark. And if you happen to like Bitterroot, you in Lovecraft Country, you also might like this book Ring Shout. It takes place also in like the 1920s, 1950s South. Um, and it deals again with a set of women that are monster hunters and it deals with root magic, kind of like a novel version of Bitterroot. It's really, really good, really interesting. Um, and we also have that available for checkout at the Broadview Public Library District if anyone is interested. So nice. that is Bitterroot. Next month, we will now, I didn't change the date on this because it is past March 25th, um, but we are going to be talking about the only daughter um, for the book banter um, in April, April's book banter. Oh, yeah. So thank you for joining us for Bitterroot, book banter on Bitterroot. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, this is just our opinions, um, our commentary. If you have any comments, any questions, comments, or concerns, Please, we encourage you to leave comments or contact the library. We would love to hear from you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.